The Princess of Wales welcomed the President and First Lady of South Korea to the state banquet tonight, looking effortlessly lovely in a white gown and sparkling tiara. At the dazzling celebrations at Buckingham Palace in London, Kate, 41, accompanied her husband Prince William, the King and Queen in welcoming Yoon Suk Yeol and his bride Kim Kiani. The mother of three, who looked ethereal in a white dress by Jenny Packham, accessorized her ensemble with a GCVO sash and star, a glittering pair of earrings that belonged to Queen Elizabeth and her family order. The Queen also chose to wear the Queen Mother's Strathmore Rose Tiara, which was a 1923 gift from her parents. It can be worn as a bandeau across the forehead or on top of the head, as the Duchess of York did at the time, following the current trends in fan. However, before tonight, the beautiful floral arrangement has not been seen in public for a long time. Queen Camilla, who honored her late mother-in-law by uncovering Queen Elizabeth's exquisite ruby and diamond Burmese tiara, joined Kate for the end. The late monarch's tiara was created in the 1970s using stones from the tiara that the Nizam of Hyderabad had given her as a wedding present. It complemented Camilla's evening gown made of red velvet by Fiona Clare, which had a pleated skirt and a loose design with flowing sleeves. She opted for dewy, peachy makeup and arranged her blonde hair in a trademark way. Additionally, yellow brooches with portraits of a youthful Queen Elizabeth II dressed in an evening gown with a ribbon and Order of the Garter Star were affixed to Kate and Camilla's chests. The brooches serve as a symbol of the wearer's induction into the royal family order, an honor bestowed upon female employees of the company by the Queen. The brooch was also worn by Sophie, the wife of the Duke of Edinburgh, who looked gorgeous in a white gown. The late Queen bestowed this honor on a total of 15 ladies. It is believed that George IV instituted it initially in the 1800s, since women at the royal court were not usually given the same commemorative medals as men. The family's males showed off their style as well, dressing in white tie and donning elaborate decorations and medals. Notably, the President of the Republic of Korea had earlier that day given His Majesty the Grand Order of Magungal. Towering scarlet, purple, and blue seasonal blossoms changed the Palace Ballroom for tonight's imperial luncheon honoring the state visit from South Korea. Much of the china, including the cut crystal glasses on the top table, had King Charles' cipher affixed to it in place of Queen Elizabeth's. Warm tartlet with soft poached egg and spinach puri, Windsor pheasant breast with croquette of celeriac and calvado sauce, salad, and mango ice cream bomb were among the dishes on the menu. The English Camel Valley Special Reserve 2015 Shadow Mouton Roth's Child Wonder Crew Powalak 1989 Shadow Lafori Paragay Sojourn 2001 Phone Second 1985 and Montrachet Wonder Crew Macarellis were among the wines served. With members of the world's largest girl band in attendance, the king began a feast with a speech replete with references to Korean and K pop cult. Greeting over 300 guests at the state banquet, which included the singers Blackpink, he said Yan Gugios and Gyo's Yul Won Yan Gabnita, welcome to Britain, in a little bit of Kering. The monarch praised the alliance as one in which close personal connections, fostered over many decades, have blossomed today into a real sense of affection, or jeng, between our societies at so many levels in honor of the 140th anniversary of Korea's diplomatic ties with the UK. He even made light of his own 1992 trip there with the late Princess Diana, joking that, I am not sure I developed much of what might be called the Gangnam style. While he was in Seoul, the king declared, Koreans have created a miracle, highlighting the remarkable journey that Korea has made throughout his lifetime. That adventure was obviously just getting started even when I paid my last visit. The passion and vitality of the Republic of Korea persisted at a rapid rate, impacting British lives in the process. From refrigerators to flat screens to semiconductors and cell phones, it is evident that the industrial efficiency model I signed Seoul 30 years ago has evolved into the pinnacle of technological innovation in the modern era. He applauded the nation's artistic creativity and a blossoming of Korean cult. Korea has paired James Bond with Squid Game, Danny Boyle with Bong Joon-ho, and the Beatles Let It Be with BDS's Dynamite he declared. He also commended Korea for its environmental efforts in spite of significant changes to the NAN. 
He stated, the Republic of Korea has always understood this as one of the very few countries that ended the 20th century with more trees than at the beginning of the century. Seeing Korea's younger generation get behind the cause is very encouraging. I commend Jenny, Jisoo, Lisa, and Rose, better known as Blackpink, for their work as ambassadors for the United Kingdom's presidency of 26 Colombian pesos and thereafter as supporters of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for spreading the word about environmental sustainability to a global audience. I can only be impressed by their ability to prioritize these important issues while still being well-known worldwide. He also emphasized the strong ties between the armed forces of the UK and Korea. British servicemen bravely fought alongside your people in the Korean War, under the banner of the United Nations, for the freedom of the Republic of Korea. Seventy years ago, he added, everyone who battled to keep your young republic alive is proud of what your nation has grown in. Over seven decades, Koreans have constructed a strong hold of democracy, human rights, and freedom by their own labor, sacrifice, and fear of dictatorship and constant onslaught. Sadly, these principles are being questioned more now than ever before in our lifetimes. Nevertheless, the UK and the Republic of Korea stand together to defend all that we hold dear. And so, Mr. President, Madam Kim, it is with great satisfaction and pleasure that I propose a toast to the next 140 years of Korean-British friendship, he said in his final triad using the Korean words for cheering. Oh, we hey yo. The president was obviously impressed with the king's attempts at Korean, and he received an exceptional wave of applause. The president of Korea also expressed some very wonderful things, expressing his deep touch with the kind preparations and the warmth of your hospitality. Under your majesty's reign, the UK with its renewed vigor is flourishing in great strides, the speaker continued. In addition to uniting the Commonwealth's citizens, your majesty's outstanding leadership is reviving the organization's core values. In addition to the much revered dignity that Your Majesty is exhibiting to the people in her role as monarch, the people of Brayton and the world over are grateful for your humble nature. We all honor your heartfelt dedication to preserving the environment, providing for society's most vulnerable citizens, and leaving our children with a brighter future. You can never be old to me, fair friend, the United Kingdom. Today, South Korea's president was formally welcomed to Britain by Charles and Camille. This is the first state visit since the king's coronation and the second of his reign, and the two are welcoming Yoon sik yeol and his wife Kim ki -hee. Additionally, early this morning, William, 41, and Kate were instrumental in welcoming President Yoon and his spouse to their hotel with a very royal reception. The guests were welcomed at their London hotel this morning by the Prince and Princess of Wales, who looked gorgeous in a crimson attire. The King and Queen were waiting for the two as they travelled with Mr. Yoon and Mrs. Him to a formal welcome at the Horse Guards Parade. After the occasion, they went to Buckingham Palace to see a special exhibition in the picture gallery featuring artifacts from the royal collection related to South Korea.